the, the biggest thing I can tell folks, Tony, is get started today. Too many people are thinking about, thinking about, thinking about, thinking about getting ready. Uh, in most cases, they have knowledge constipation. Want to achieve your dream goal? Listen to the tips from the guy who made it happen to himself. I dropped 70 pounds going from a 4X to a 1X in four years. I went from 10K to six figures without a college degree. You too can get the goals you set. It's time to live your best life now. I'm your host, Tony Woodall, and welcome to Goal Getting Podcast. Hello, Goal Getters. This is Tony Woodall, your host with Goal Getting Podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at GoalGettingBook.com, where there's over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or other MP3 player. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hello, Goal Getters. I'm your host, Tony Woodall, and welcome to Goal Getting Podcast, where each Wednesday, I or one of my great guests share tips, strategies, and inspiration to help you get the goals you set. Today, we are honored to have Matt Miller as our guest speaker. Matt Miller graduated from the United States Air Force Academy in 1989 and became an Air Force pilot. Although that wasn't a goal of his, he excelled and served for nine years. After leaving the Air Force, Matt worked in both medical and advertising fields and was a top producer in both fields. Matt had a goal of working for himself, and after being inspired by school kids, soon ventured out on his own in 2011 to grow his school fundraising company, School Spirit Vending. Today, Matt and his team provide passive fundraising for over 1,500 schools in over 23 states. Matt, first let me thank you for the service to our country and also for being a guest on Goal Getting Podcast today. Thanks, Tony. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Now, Matt and I both met uh, online through a mastermind group that we're involved in, and finally had the opportunity to meet in person at Podcast Movement in July of this year. So Matt, tell our goal getters a little bit about yourself, uh, about what you've done, what you're doing today, and how things are going. Yeah, Tony, um, I grew up in the Chicago area and uh, wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do when I got you know done with high school. I had a good friend of my dad's that was a liaison officer for the Air Force Academy and ended up sharing a little bit about the academy with me. It kind of made sense. I was looking for a way to go to school away from home. My parents were teachers and and there was four of us kids uh, in a different grade in high school when I was a senior. So I kind of had to figure the whole college thing out. Was blessed to have been the you know right uh, candidate for the academy, being well-rounded and doing fairly well in school. Went to the academy, graduated from there in 1989 and was fortunate to be an Air Force pilot going to pilot training after graduation, ended up being an Air Force instructor pilot for six years, followed by three years flying what's called the C-5A Galaxy, which is uh, one of the largest airplanes in the world. Enjoyed flying, but wanted to get out on my own and do my own thing. So left the military in uh, February of 98, realized after all my time in the military and in, in the corporate world that I didn't like being told what to do and really wanted to do my own thing. So started doing some business stuff on the side, initially selling books on Amazon and eBay, did some multi-level marketing stuff, recycled aluminum cans for a while, did just kind of whatever we had to do to get by. Had a buddy of mine from church that happened to mention that he had gotten a couple of gumball machines and he and his young daughters were doing some stuff together with that. He was teaching them about making money and business and everything. And I remember that conversation and thought maybe I could do vending. I had read Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad at that by that point and was really looking for a way to develop income passively. So started out with a $32 used gumball machine on eBay and over a year and a half's time grew that to about 150 locations around the Houston area. Right around then was when 07 and 08 hit and the markets tank was looking for a way to increase revenues and create more stability for my vending business and had kids not come knocking on my door selling stuff for the local schools. And that's kind of what inspired School Spirit Vending, which is the company I head today. Wow, that's fantastic. Now, you, you have a lot of experience you know, with the military and got out of there and that wasn't a career that you wanted to do full time. I read or heard that you didn't necessarily want to be a pilot. That wasn't your original goal and uh, that you managed to work through that, I guess, and became one. You know, I, my whole goal was to go to school away from home. 
So mm-hmm. that's why I went to the Air Force Academy. I had no family that had been in the military. I thought being a, a, in the Air Force would su- sound like a cool idea. You know, I really didn't have aspirations for that. When I got to my junior year at the Air Force Academy, I didn't know what I wanted to do for my career. But I found out if I was medically qualified to fly, which I was, and didn't want to be a pilot, I had to go sit in front of the three-star general and tell him why I didn't want to fly. And I just, I didn't want the FaceTime, believe it or not. So I ended up going on a pilot training, loved every minute of the time that I flew, but knew that I could do some other things, make more money, be paid more handsomely for my work if I went out on my own and did some other things. Excellent. Now, again, that's a still interesting story that that wasn't what you planned on doing. And you did well doing it, but decided that wasn't where you wanted to continue. Um, you know, we often make those changes in life when we have the opportunity to do so. That's great. Uh, and, and then having to go face a three-star general can be a little daunting, <laughs> I think. You know, having been in the military myself, uh, in the National Guard, uh, I can certainly uh, feel that pain there of having to do something like that. Uh, and you flew the C-5A, which I find very uh, fascinating. Those are huge airplanes. Just the thought of being able to fly something like that is amazing. So. Yeah, it was pretty pretty amazing. Believe it or not, one of the hardest things we had to do was taxi that airplane because most airfields around the world are not made for an airplane that big. The flying was the easy part. It was moving it around on the ground ground that was difficult. Yeah, that's a little harder than uh, on the ground to move them anyway, I think, than in the air. So, uh, well, that's great. Now, you talked about the uh, downturn in 2008 and how that affected your your business and everything. And then you got inspired by kids and decided to do the school spirit vending. Now, how is that uh, something, you know, we have people who are looking for ways to improve their income or to potentially get a new career or, you know, get out of the corporate world like you did and get into their own type of self-employment. How is uh, school spirit vending or that type of uh, opportunity available to people? Well, we started franchising here uh, in the last six months or so. Uh, We've built a distributorship model over the years prior to this. What we do is we literally offer a busy professional who is already doing well in their career or a stay-at-home mom who's looking to make some additional income on the side. We, We offer them an opportunity to jump in at the top of the vending industry with a turnkey business that you know allows them to begin to learn how to derive income passively and help local schools in the process. We've been doing this for eight years. We've kind of got it figured out. We've got a system in place that teaches people every step of the way and, uh, of course, have all the suppliers nailed down. We produce the majority of the product that goes in our machines as well. So we kind of have all the details handled. So a professional just has to decide that that what we're doing makes sense to them, uh, join the team, and then we teach them the ropes from there. All right. Now, a lot of schools are, you know, having a lot of vending machines in there. I know when my kids were in school, they had all the soda machines and all the candy and all the things that kids are not really supposed to be eating and things like that um, with the obesity problem that we have in in the country today, especially in schools, your machines do or don't sell candy or they sell other things because you say school spirit. How does that kind of tie in? We, we actually sell stickers, believe it or not. We, we custom design mascot stickers for the schools. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we play sticker machines in the schools. Those mascot stickers are vended from the machines along with whatever else the kids are into at the time. You know, NFL is huge this time of year. We've uh, Minions because of the Minions movie and the Despicable Me uh, franchise has been really, really popular for our kids. It, believe it or not, it's stickers. There's no calories in stickers. There's no junk food involved. So we don't have to worry about the, the uh, restrictions that the government's putting on schools every day as far as healthy eating and all that because uh, we don't fit into that category, thankfully. Yeah, well, that's a good, good business model there. Now, when you're talking about school spirit and things like that and stickers, that's actually very good in my opinion. And I think that's, you know, a way to help kids get motivated or to keep them motivated. Uh, I know, you know, when my kids were growing up, giving them stickers or something along that line is an incentive to, you know, excel at school or to do something around the house that I wanted them to do. And sometimes we had to use those forms of motivation to 
help us achieve our goals and getting them to do something. So how does that, does that kind of what uh, you put that out there for? Or Well, our, our, our machine serves a multitude of purposes. Number one, it helps drive and grow school spirit within the school. Number two, it is a fundraiser. Schools have the ability to passively raise money without any volunteers in our program, which is huge for them today because volunteers are pretty hard to come by and funding is pretty hard to come by. And then third, it works as a a rewards platform, like you mentioned. Many parents and many educators use it as such. And in the process, uh, they find it, it works extremely effectively in that area as well. Oh, that's great. The, uh, and again, you try to tie it into the school's mascots and the school's spirit type wear that they have or something on that line. So that's pretty cool. Correct. Excellent. So what do you, um, recommend for people, you know, if they're looking at some type of passive income or, you know, want to do something for their, to improve their income or their career, how does this work with, uh, you know, being able to do this on a school spirit vending type platform or for fundraising for schools, especially, I know, as you mentioned, with the funds getting tighter, keep hearing about school teachers are having to buy their own supplies and things like that. It seems like this would also be a great way for school fundraising because I always hated my kids having to go out and sell uh, wrapping paper or magazines and things like that. It just did not seem the thing for them to do. But how does this help a school? Well, like I said, it's it's um, they most big you know fundraising events every year. Um, you know whether it be selling cookie dough or wrapping paper or whatever, like you said, this is a supplement to that. You know, longer term, one of my bigger goals is to completely reinvent the school fundraising industry to create a whole staple of companies that provide hassle-free fundraising so that over time we get the schools completely out of the fundraising world and allow them to spend their time doing what they do best, which is teaching our kids and educating them and allow companies and business people like myself to, to step in and take care of the fundraising on their behalf. Excellent. Well, that's definitely a goal to have because, again, our teachers should be teaching, not you know, worrying about trying to raise funds and, or take funds out of their pocket uh, necessarily to teach our children. So having uh, the ability for us to come up with ways to do that passively is, is a phenomenal idea, uh, in my opinion, it's something well needed. So thank you for at least coming up with a brainchild and executing on that. So that's um, something I think we all need to look at and, you know, not trying to sell your company necessarily, but, uh, you know, schools that are looking for ways to do that, this sounds like a dynamite way to, you know, build that school spirit camaraderie within the school on the team level there and then also to raise some money that they can use so i think that's a great idea so matt uh you know as we go through there we talked you just talked about goals and one, that being one of your goals what are some of the goals that you have for this year i know we're getting close to the end of the year probably got a couple more goals i think you may be working on i hope uh if not uh what are your goals for coming up for the next year a couple of them that you're working on yeah, th- there's a couple bigger ones. Well, there's one for through the end of the year, Tony, that I'd like to hit that we're working on, and then s- several others that are kind of long, a little bit longer term. As far as annual, I started a a podcast uh, just after you and I met at Podcast Movement called School Zone Podcast. Uh, it can be found at schoolzonepodcast.com or on iTunes. Its purpose is to educate people on the school resource and fundraising companies that are out there in our industry. And we do inter- interviews with industry experts and insiders um, to provide information and to be that source for educators, administrators, and volunteers around the country. My goal is to have all 52 episodes for this first year recorded by the end of this calendar year so that I can get to the point where I'm batching a lot of my interviews so I'm not spending the entire year interviewing and can actually get the interviews done, get the editing done, and then just schedule out the rest of this this year with the podcast. As far as uh, on the School Spirit Vending side, um, our goal is to actually double our company size in the next two years. Also to buy out a another company that's in our space that we've coexisted alongside for a number of years, but potentially take take what they're doing off their hands and 
and in the process provide more opportunity for, for folks within our team and organization. That's excellent. Uh, so what are some of the things on this podcast that will benefit our listeners and you know, schools in general, what are some of the goals that you have to type of content that you hope to share out there with people? Well, most people, most schools, when they're trying to figure out what resources they're going to you know, take advantage of each year, there's a couple ways they get it. They either just do searching online and hope to come across some stuff that makes sense, or they go to a trade show that has fundraising companies and that type of thing at it. Those trade shows are few and far between. They typically only happen, you know, once or twice a year. So in the process, there's not any real continuing, continual education and learning going on. And oftentimes, obviously at a trade show, there, there's a limited amount of time to actually share the benefits of what a lot of these companies provide. With School Zone Podcast, the goal is to give these vendors and companies an opportunity to kind of give a little bit more backstory, how they got started what makes them tick and give a much more intimate look at those operations than what these educators, administrators, or volunteers have access to anywhere else. And of course, give them a way to passively learn throughout the year about all these different companies that are out there so that they can, it can be an ongoing education for them, you know, when they're working out or whether they're driving to and from work or whether they're exercising or, you know, mowing the lawn for that matter. That's one of the beauties, as I know you know, of podcasting is the fact that unlike blogging, a lot of other things where the listener or the reader has to be fully engaged with a podcast, you can kind of fit it into the cracks of your life. You can turn your car into a traveling university. And our hope is to become that resource for the schools that we serve around the the country and give them a much better, more thorough education of what's out there. No, that's a great tool. I think it's like a tool of uh, virtual trade show, as you said there, because, you know, having been involved in both ends of the trade show circuit uh, as a seller and also as a person looking at the different products to be able to get that information easier without having to travel and without the fast pace. You never have time to stand there and talk with somebody unless you're going to set up a, an appointment. Then you, again, you got to invest the money to travel there, to stay there at a hotel and all that. So being able to do that on a podcast uh, passively while you're driving down the road or working in the yard or whatever is just a perfect opportunity. So I think that's great for the educators to be able to get that information much easier. So very good idea. I like that Um, in a virtual trade show for uh, educators and for the vendors themselves as well. Yes, sir. So those are some great goals. And if we can help you with any of those, we'll do our best to do so. One of the other things that we like to find out is about habits. Habits can be detrimental or positive for us. Usually we want them to be positive. What are some of the good success habits that you've developed and use throughout your career and that helps keep you being successful? You know, there's a couple of them that have been huge for me, Tony. The first is I'm an early riser. Uh, I cannot stress the value of getting up early. Some people think it's extreme, and especially when I control my life and control my day being self-employed, you know, a lot of people would think, well, man, you know, just sleep in or whatever. And don't get me wrong, there's days where I choose to do that. But um, I find if I, if I can get up early, I can tackle so much more before the rest of the house and the rest of the world has even gotten up in most cases to where it gives me a lot more freedom the rest of the day to do whatever I need to do or want to. So that that's the biggest one. The second one is I keep an ongoing list of goals. Uh, I've got a coach. I know you know Aaron Walker. Aaron has been a coach of mine here for about the last uh, 18 months or so, one of the things that he encouraged me to do is to break up my year into quarters and to set quarterly goals. In order for me to kind of get my head around that, when he and I started doing that here uh, a while back, I ended up just putting together a spreadsheet that had a a whole list of tasks that needed to be accomplished on a quarter each quarter. That has been huge for me because it's allowed me to take a small enough chunk of the year and focus in order to continue to move my companies and my progress forward. It's something that as I'm going through coaching calls with him, I can email him a a weekly update to that spreadsheet. He and I can sit down and talk about 
what I've learned, what I need to accomplish, what resources I need to get a hold of and that type of thing. I have seen more forward growth, which has led to forward momentum by doing that and then having somebody to be accountable to than I than I had have ever in e- equal or comparable period of time in my life. It's been huge. Excellent. That is one of the stalwart uh, portions of the goal getting program is uh, having a list like that to break your goals down into chunks that you can work with, but also having a worksheet where you can track what you're doing every single day and keep up with that. That is a very valid tool that we use frequently and recommend to actually have a goal getting worksheet like that, the goal maintenance and goal tracking worksheet on the goal getting program. Uh, which our listeners can get by going to goalgettingpodcast.com slash action and get our action plan, and they will be able to start tracking that. So that's a great tool, and I'm glad that Aaron does that for you. And you mentioned Aaron and accountability, and I know that we're you met in a mastermind group, and it was Aaron's mastermind group that we're in. You believe, and I do as well, that accountability has helped you with that, You know, and I think that's one thing that most people don't ever – get into in their setting goals is having an accountability partner or a mastermind uh, group that they can get involved in. So you do use those and recommend that. Oh, that's huge. And I'll give you a really basic example. Yeah, not some big highfalutin business example, but just a simple one that once I had air to be accountable to has made a huge difference in my life. When I got started working with him, the first thing I had to do was fill out a personal assessment. And one of the questions on that assessment, is there anything that you're doing in your life right now that you'd like to stop doing? As an air crew member and pilot for years, I didn't drink coffee. I drank, drank Cokes and then eventually transitioned to Diet Coke. And I was that guy that, you know, had five, four, five, six Diet Cokes a day. And so I put it in on that assessment that I'd like to stop drinking sodas and Diet Coke. Well, I'll never forget. I was, this is about a year, a little over a year ago. Aaron sent me a text message as I was on the way to church one morning, just saying, hey, listen, when we talk this week, I want to know what your plan is for getting off the Diet Coke. I don't want any wimpy excuses. Well, I was at church. I had had a Diet Coke I was drinking on the way. Once church was over, I finished that Diet Coke, and I'm now over a year without having had any soda of any kind. And all it took was somebody that I respected calling me on it, And then a couple of times throughout the year, he'd send me a text just asking me how I was doing. And I haven't missed it. I haven't had one in that period of time. And it was because I had somebody that cared enough to just call me on it and and hold me accountable that that I don't have that habit. Oh, that's phenomenal. And it really does take that a lot of times, you know, somebody to do that, to hold you accountable. And we just never get into just thinking about it unless we, you know, sometimes hear other people talk about it because, you know, I know I didn't think about getting into a mastermind group until I realized what power it had and listening to others. So you know, hopefully when you're doing goals and setting goals, you need to have an accountability partner. It needs to be somebody like Aaron did with you. No excuses, you know, no wimpy excuses for it. Makes you stay to it and, you know, hold you accountable. Exactly what their title is, the accountability partner. Yes, sir. Yeah, so that's great. Thank you for sharing that. I love working with Aaron. He's a great guy and very inspirational. So great being a part of that group. Now, um, we all do a lot of reading and try to get more knowledge in. We have to keep reading and getting educated ourselves a lot of times. What are some books that you recommend to someone trying to achieve their goals? Well, uh, the book that I recommend to everybody, because most people don't understand the different ways of making money, is... Uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. That book completely changed my life 10 years ago. It made me look at the world and made made the, me look at the way I spent my time from a completely different angle and vantage point. That has been huge for me. Another book that was huge for me was Tim Ferriss's The 4-Hour Work Week. Once again, opened my mind to what the possibilities were, opened my mind to the resources available today, with the technology that we all have access to on our smartphones and on our computers. Both those books set me up with a basic foundation of knowledge and knowledge and inspiration to ha- allow me to be where I am today and, and have been huge for me. Oh, that's excellent. I've read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and it got me started as well, you know, my quest to do what I'm doing today. 
And uh, I haven't finished Tim Ferriss's book, but I've heard great recommendations for it and hope to finish that soon. So great recommendations. Thank you, Matt. Hey, Matt, we're going to take a quick break to have a quick word from our sponsor, Audible.com. Goalgetters, Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook of your choice and a free 30-day trial membership. Just go to goalgettingbook.com and you can choose from over 180,000 audio programs, including the three books Matt recommended today, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, 4-Hour Work Week, and Failing Forward. You can download a title free and start listening. It's that easy. Go to goalgettingbook.com. That's goalgettingbook.com and get started today. Why Audible? Well, Audible content includes more than 180,000 audio programs from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazine and newspaper publishers, and business information providers. Now back to Matt and Goal Getting Podcast. When you started out working, you know, in life and everything on your career and military, did you have one best piece of advice that you ever received? What is the best advice you ever received? I, you know, I would break it up into two different parts, Tony. First is to write down your goals. And secondly is to set high but achievable goals. Too many of us sell ourselves short. Too many of us, well, we're, we're, we can lie to ourselves better than we can lie to anybody else. We judge ourselves by our intentions. We judge everybody else by their actions. Only by writing down your goals do you truly commit yourself to their achievement? It's so easy. You know, I told myself for years that I was going to stop with the Diet Coke thing. You know, I told myself for years that I was going to start a business and all that. But it was finally when I started writing these goals down that things started to happen and started to change because there's a, there's a mental shift that occurs and a commitment level that occurs that until you do that just isn't there. That's true. That's true. And again, we teach that consistently at uh, Goal Getting uh, Podcast and on our programs to be sure you write your goals down. It does affect us mentally. It does help put that into our subconscious mind when we write those down. It does shift, as you said, you know, our mental thinking with it. So those are some great pieces of advice. Thank you. Now, Matt, we're running out of time and I appreciate uh, your time and you being on the show, but I don't want to go over what we promised. So I'm going to ask you for some parting words of wisdom. What uh, are some of the advice that you can offer to our guests that will help them in their careers and their goals that they have set for themselves? You know, the, the biggest thing I can tell folks, Tony, is get started today. Too many people are thinking about thinking about thinking about thinking about getting ready. Uh, in most cases, they have knowledge constipation and are trying to figure it all out before they ever get started. Well, the reality is you're never going to figure it all out. Learn by doing and realize you're going to fail a ton along the way. And that's okay as long as you learn from your failures and move forward. John Maxwell wrote a great book called Failing Forward. If you haven't read it, that's another great resource and, and great book to read because success is built on failure. Unfortunately, we're taught in school that failure is bad. And in most of our life, we're directed away from failure. Well, the most successful in our society, the reason why they're there is because 99% of the time they failed more than everybody else had. And they just kept shooting through those failures and, and learn from them and move forward. Absolutely. And I've had my share of failures. So luckily I've learned quite a bit from all of them and continue to, to grow. And uh, that's a Valid point, you know, and I like your term knowledge constipation. Um, I have to remember that and use that going forward. But yeah, getting started is, is the toughest part for a lot of people that you have to do that and not go, you know, spend too much time thinking about things. One of my favorite quotes is from Ernest Hemingway, never mistake motion for action. We often get busy thinking about things and as you say, starting, 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 but, uh, never actually commit to doing it. So. And that brings me to my next and one last question, Matt. What quote hangs on your wall? What quote do you use to motivate or inspire yourself? Uh, Zig Ziglar said years ago while he was still living, help enough other people get what they want and you'll be taken care of. And that's kind of the mantra I live by. 
if I help enough schools accomplish what they want to, if I help enough professionals derive secondary income streams utilizing our program, I'll be taken care of. And that has proven true Try time and time and time again with what we do. That's what keeps me going every day. Excellent. Great tool. Great uh, thought from Zig Ziglar. Great thought from Matt. Miller, thank you very much, Matt. I appreciate you being on the show. You've great given some great value bombs today for us and golden nuggets that our listeners can use to help get the goals they set. And I want to thank you again for your service in the military as well as for being on our show. Thank you, Tony. Hey, I was wondering, I've got a gift that I'd love to give your audience, if that's okay. That would be wonderful. Thank you, Matt. What uh, do you have for our audience today? I, I wrote a, a short pamphlet, a short ebook called Live Your Dreams, The Top 10 Reasons Why You Need to Start a Vending Business, and would love to give that to anybody in your audience who's interested. Uh, they can just go to SSV Business, SSV as in School Spirit Vending ssvbusiness.com forward slash goal get g-o-a-l-g-e-t that's a link specifically for your podcast audience would love to share what i've learned over the years about vending and and the impact that it's had on me in my life with anybody in your audience who's interested oh excellent i will have that on our show notes for the listeners to be able to click the link to get to that quickly but it's ssvbusiness.com slash goal get i will put that link on our show notes at goalgettingpodcast.com slash matt m-a-t-t they can easily get to that link and matt thank you for providing that to our listeners today i think that will be beneficial for them to be able to understand a little bit more about that opportunities so, thank you tony very much and again, I appreciate you being on the show and we will keep chatting with you in our mastermind group and uh, keep going forward with our goals. So thank you. Thanks. Have a great rest of the week, Tony. Great. Thank you. And listeners, thank you and have a great day.